Hello, it's me, Queen Sensitivity, and I'm back with another Pick a Card Tarot reading. And as you can see today, we are doing things a bit differently. As I mentioned before in my last video, I got a new uh, camera holder. And so I decided to try this out, this new view. And let me know in the comments if y'all like it. But we're going to be asking today, what Taylor Swift song are you and why? So go ahead and take your time and pick a card. All right, Power One. So this is going to be a reading today on what Taylor Swift song are you? And before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and break down this reading. So first, we're going to look into your energy with these three tarot cards, what energy you're in right now. And also, this will give you a good idea of whether or not this is your pile. And then we're going to get into the surprise Taylor Swift song uh, that I have printed out in lyric form. And we're going to go over that and analyze that. And then after that, we're going to get into your oracle cards to give you some advice on whatever messages you receive today. And this is going to be your bottom of the deck energy in case you were wondering. That's what that is. And then I have this, uh, this journal that Taylor Swift has her personal uh, diary entries over the years in here. And I'm going to randomly select one to read for you. And hope, oh, hopefully that's fun. I don't know, but if you couldn't tell, I'm a bit nervous today and I'm feeling a bit energetic. And I think it has something to do with the approaching full moon, even though I want this reading to be timeless. I am still very much impacted by the different times of the year and different uh, phases of the moon, especially. But so far, what I'm picking up from your energy is I feel like I'm very... Uh, What's it called? Fish out of water. I don't know if you've seen like those movies where like kids go to camp. I feel like I'm like feeling like that. Like I just showed up at camp and you know how you know. I guess it's the same thing when you go to school, but I'm going to use camp specifically. You know how when you know like the people, when you, you know people, but because you're in a different environment, it like Ain't no telling like what could happen, you know, even though you know them, people act differently in different environments. And so you're kind of like watching your garden, you're hoping for the best, but you know, anything could happen. That's how I'm feeling right now. So the first card you have is the Hermit. Then you have the Empress in reverse. And then you have the Eight of Swords, which is the Eight of Inspiration in this deck. I'm going to turn these right side up. But I'm not going to forget that they were in reverse. So I feel like with you, this is what I'm saying. I feel like you're coming into your empress hood, regardless or not if you're a, a male or a female, just take it as, you know, kinghood or emperorhood. But you're kind of hesitating because I feel like with this hermit mode, like you're you trust this more than you trust this. And you see how both of these have the sun in the middle of it? So it's like, in this case, the sun is far away. And in this case, the sun, the spotlight is the empress. So I feel like you're more comfortable with like sending out your work and having it be praised from afar. And you're like, oh, look, you know, I'm shining all the way over there. Versus people know that it was you. So if we're going back to that camp analogy, let's say y'all had to build like a a bear trap. I don't know why I'm getting a bear trap. I don't think that's safe <laughs> for people. But okay, let's say y'all build a bear trap and you built the very best bear trap. And for this particular assignment, I think it, like let's say it was anonymous, like nobody really knew who made it and so you're kind of like happy and you get to like watch the reactions also it looks like these little trail of footprints like you're happy to sit back in case you fail like in case people are like this is the worst bear trap ever like why did they make this who made this and you get to be like yeah who made this like they suck and you kind of get to like adjust who you are based on your surroundings 
but you also want that credit and notoriety. And I also, I feel like you know that you're meant to have that kind of praise. You're meant to have that kind of, you're meant to be a star because you are smart and you actually built the best bear trap and you know it's supposed to be you. And so you're kind of in this in-between uh, period. With this uh, aid of inspiration, oh, I just noticed there's two snails up here. I've never seen that before, <laughs> if you can see that. I've never seen these two snails. And because it was in reverse, these two snails are upright if you reverse it. And with this, it's also kind of fast paced, I feel like, but with it in reverse, how it came and then with the snails being in the upright, I feel like you might be slow moving towards this empress hood. Also, I'm like taking heed of these planets that are right here. Like, I feel like with planets, they take a long time to form and they also take a long time to uh, make evolution. Is it ev revolution? Like we make a revolution around the sun or evolve, revolve around the sun. Like it takes a long time and obviously it takes 24 hours on earth to make a, a full spin. So it like it's taking you some time. And I feel like that's where you are. Very slow moving energy. Very cautious, I feel like. What else? I also want to note that in both of these images, there are clouds. And it's like, it's not a, it's not a cloudy day though. So I feel like you might be in this mood where you're like trying to convince yourself that you don't know what you should do. Like you don't know which direction you should go. Should I do this? Should I put myself out there? Like, and you know that you should, <laughs> you know that you should. And I want to mention that in all of these cards, there's some type of sun, sun in all these cards. So you might be a Leo or you might just have a lot of uh, fire energy in your zodiac chart or your birth chart. Your birth chart. Yeah, it's birth chart, not zodiac chart. But yeah, I feel like with these high heel shoes, you might be afraid that it'll pierce the sand. Like remember, I was saying like this motion is fast paced, and it was in reverse, so it slowed down. Like you're afraid of a. Uh, What's it called? Like when people do something, they're afraid of like lifting any eyebrows. Like you're afraid of like pushing people out of their comfort zone or offending them. And I feel like you should worry about that. But this isn't the really the advice phase. This is the phase of just telling you where your energy is right now. So let's go ahead and get into the. Oh wait, let's do the bottom deck energy. So the bottom deck energy is this five of inspiration and it looks like this person is in different phases. So this is, this is again you in like different phases and like trying to decide like which door to go through. But I feel like, you know, they're really, I feel like this is the true you, you know, those movies where it's like, it's a whole bunch of holograms and then you have to figure out which person is actually real. And I feel like this is you and you know, this is the only mirror that you should be looking to. And this person is kind of looking away. Like you're like, not really giving in to your power is what I feel like. Okay. What song do you have? I made a choice of ran four randomly selected songs from my uh, Taylor Swift music collection. I randomly picked this folder. This is the only origami I know how to make, by the way. <laughs> I learned it when I was in like seventh grade by my friend. I never forgot it. You got seven. Oh, this is perfect. Seven by Taylor Swift. And this song is from the uh, Folklore album. And I want to say, again, I don't own the rights to any of this. <laughs> any of these lyrics, you know, I'm just going to analyze them. So the song Seven is, you should obviously go listen to it. It's basically about being young, being seven years old and going back to that time in your life when uh you were seven i'm being attracted to these lyrics right here are there still beautiful things so i take it as somebody who's like going back and remembering when they were seven years old and they do this because right now i feel like they would have to make you're you're being forced to make or not forced but like you're 
you're in this position where you have to make adult decisions. Like this is a very uh, youthful like perspective of like I'm gonna sit back and and wait for everybody else. Not to say that you know kids all do this, but you know when you're young and you're shy and you don't have to you don't have to take the front driver's seat. You don't have to be the empress. And so you go back and you try to remember a time when like there when it was easy and you didn't have to worry so much. And with this are there still beautiful things part, I feel like you might be hesitant to make this decision in and under that is the world. You might be hesitant to make this decision again because you don't trust the world to have a good outcome. Like you don't trust everything to be okay. Like if I get in this empress position, are people going to continuously love me? Taylor Swift talks about that a lot in her music. And I'm, I'm still, I'm paying attention to this lyric now. I still got love for you. But she talks about this idea of like people falling out of love with her and her whole thing. And I know in a, a song that she has on her uh, Red album, Taylor's version, it's it's nothing new. And she's like, will you still love me when I'm nothing new, when I'm too old for this to be cute, for like for me to cry? It's, it's not cool anymore. Will you still love me? And I feel like you're worried. Like when I do come out and I am myself and I make my decision, I put myself out there and I show my work. Yeah, they may love it this time, but what about next time? What about next month? And when I put this out, when I, when I become too weird, when I become too intense, will people still love me? And that's like the, the fear. Oh, I'm paying attention to this lyric now. I was too scared to jump in. I feel like that's where you are. You're too scared to jump in. Anything else? Yeah, with this, I th your I think your house is haunted. Your dad is always mad, and that must be why. When you're young, you kind of make up explanations because you don't really have a logical way of answering them. So, like, if a house is creaking. And you don't know nothing about like the construction of houses and how they're made. You're going to assume it's haunted. You're going to assume that it's it's something wrong with the house and it must be mystical and it must be magical and it must be ghostly. But in reality, it's most likely just uh, the pipes, you know, and I feel like you sometimes take this kind of perspective of something being haunted with you like. If people don't like something that I did, it's because of me versus logically, everybody cannot like you. Like literally, it's impossible. Not everybody cannot like you and everybody cannot like every single thing you do like in a very legitimate way. If somebody is saying that they like everything you do, ev everything you do every single time, it's not coming from an authentic place, especially if you're being authentic with your creations. And so it's like, you kind of make up this this thing about yourself. I must be haunted. There must be something wrong with me. My work must not be good enough because everybody's not liking it every single time versus the logical explanation. It's just that everybody don't like everything every single time. Even with Taylor Swift, I feel like a lot of speculation about this album, I think she felt like people weren't going to really cling to this album. And I, don't, I think she also didn't really care she just did anyway it's so many taylor swift songs that people don't like the popular population don't know i'm pretty sure they don't know this song seven even though it was you know album of the year at the grammys but it's like you do it because you love it and also that's who you're supposed to be you're supposed to be shining you're supposed to be a star and that's what stars do they they emit light even when nobody's looking at it like right now in the daytime, it's the daytime right now with me. It's a whole bunch of, it's billions of stars out there in the sky, but I can't see them <laughs> right now. And it's like the star light isn't going to stop emitting just because I can't see it. They don't hide in the closet just because I can't see it. Let's see if anything is here okay 
like this whole little section. We'll move to India forever, pass down like folk songs, our love lasts so long. So I feel like there's like this sense of like you wanting to run away. <laughs> you know, this, this kid at camp and you get there and you, you're young, you're like, oh, what if I just ran away? Everything would be so much easier if I just ran away. And with this pass down like folk songs, I feel like this might be a habit in your uh, ancestry to kind of run away from success. Uh, let me know in the comments if, if this is true. But with this, our love lasts so long. And then all the L's. I'm going to put a heart here. I feel like with this, our love lasts so long. You, whatever you make, I feel like you think people don't notice you. But it, it is reckoned. It is, people do notice it. And people do remember it. Whatever you create. Even if you don't show it to anybody. I feel like the imprint, like if you write songs and you don't send anybody the imprint of your, that effort lasts forever. And obviously this is by Aaron Desner and Taylor Swift. Okay, now let's look into your advice. You have second chakra, Archangel Ariel, and you have appreciation. Ooh, okay. So I feel like with this, the second chakra, I believe this is the sacral chakra. And I, I don't know if I, yeah, it's Ariel. And appreciation. I feel like spirit wants you to appreciate your creativity. You know, it's so easy to hide your creativity and hide your truth and hide your magic and hide your empressness. But also just be grateful that you have it in the first place. Like you have something to withhold, you know. And if you can't find the courage to do it for yourself, do it for your magic. Do it for your creativity. Like imagine you're this seven-year-old kid and would you hide their magic? Would you tell them, you know, you can't go out and you can't put your song out. You can't show your song or you can't go to that karaoke thing or you can't perform at the, the campfire or whatever because I'm scared. Like you, you wouldn't hold yourself back. So why... Why would you hold yourself back? <laughs> you wouldn't hold that seven-year-old kid back, so why would you hold yourself back? And I feel like getting in this perspective of you being this seven-year-old kid will really help you find the courage by remembering and appreciating that this is life. <laughs> and remembering, you know, that magic is everything and and if if magic isn't worth putting isn't worth bravery and putting something out and sacrificing i don't know your ego or your safety you know as far as like being safe from like criticism then you know it's not worth it i don't know if i'm like making sense but i feel like that's what i'm getting from this appreciation appreciate your gifts as as on their own <laughs> okay see as you can see this is actual taylor swift writing i'm gonna read this one it says february 2011 all too well lyrics first draft there are there we are again when you blew the candle out took this blazing lone took this blazing lane Stead it right into the ground. Shaking, crossed out, running, scared. I was there. Let me try to read that again. <laughs> there we are again when you blew the candle out. Took this blazing love. Steadied it right into the ground. Running, scared. I was there. Okay. So this has been your reading pile number one. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment because I want to know what you thought about this different type of reading. And don't forget to share and don't forget to <laughs> follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, pal two, welcome to your reading today. We're asking the question, what Taylor Swift song are you? And you know, what does that 
what does it have to say about you? So off the back, I was getting this song called Fake Happy by Haley Williams, but it's it's by Paramore. And it's like, uh, it starts off, I love making you believe what you get is what you see, but I'm no fake happy, something like that. I feel like with you, I felt this kind of confidence energy, but I, at the same time, I feel like there's nothing beneath it. Have you ever heard of fracking? It's when they like drill underground, but they don't drill from the surface. They drill like from the side. And so when you do that, the foundation on top becomes weak. And I feel like you feel, like I feel like you're putting on a brave face. That's what I feel for you. Uh, so before, I was supposed to do this afterwards, but I'm gonna go ahead and get into the layout of your reading today. So first, we're going to go over these tarot cards to get your energy and description of you so you can know that this is your pile. And then we're going to get into your Taylor Swift song that I randomly selected. And then we're going to get into your Oracle cards to give you advice on whatever this has to say. By the way, this is your bottom deck energy. And then we're going to get into a handwritten diary entry from Taylor Swift that she has in this book to get even more into Taylor Swift. I also wanted to talk about like why I chose to do this kind of reading because I don't think I talked about it in the intro but I feel compelled to now. I feel like you like explanations. I feel like you're a very uh, goal oriented person and you don't like BS and you don't like like if you're going somewhere you want people to have their stuff together. You want all the documents to be laid out. You want to have had the PowerPoint the night before in advance so you could you could have gone over it. And so I feel like you want an explanation. <laughs> My explanation is that I love lyrics, I love music, and I, I felt like I should have that incorporated in my readings. There's no reading not to. And I feel like it's a very original idea. And I find also that whenever I am more myself and not so uh, dependent on what I've seen other people do, like just because that's how other people do it doesn't mean that's how I need to do it so whenever I go into my weirdness it always makes me feel really good so that's why I'm doing this you got the four of wands this card kept coming out as well this card this emperor card and the devil kept coming out and I decided to go ahead and take this one and to leave this one as the bottom deck you got the queen of pentacles and you got the queen of wands in reverse I'm gonna remember that this is in reverse you got two queens. <laughs> you got two queens and you got the emperor, even though he was in reverse. And I'm just saying he because it's a male appearing person. And then you got the four of wands, which is like everybody calls it the twin flame card, but it doesn't necessarily have to be anything romantic. I feel like this is where that fake confidence thing is coming from, that fake happy. I don't think it's because your success or what you've gained is fake. I think that you're kind of just, you know how <clears throat> when you get everything you want and then you're kind of like something hits you. Let's go to Taylor Swift. In her uh, Miss Americana uh, documentary film on Netflix, go watch it if you can. She talks about how she had just finished winning, I think, for 1989, and she got home, and, or she was, like, in the car after this award ceremony, and she was like, isn't there somebody, like, I should be able to call right now? Like, isn't there supposed to be a person who's, like, in it with me? Like, I don't, where's my person? And I feel like this might be you. Like, she had all this success in the world, but she had nobody to like celebrate it with besides obviously like her her family and stuff. But it's it's different when you have like a, a, a person who's who you're very, very truly intimate with. And if you can you can see with this Queen of Pentacles, she's like looking like I have this gold, but she's not really paying attention to it, like looking away, like, oh yeah. I'm the best, I don't know, I'm here an Olympian, maybe you're an athlete. I'm the best athlete, but uh, I don't have that, that oomph, that, that spark, that gold. And this also reminds me of like the devil energy card, even though I'm not 
pick up any negative energy and I feel like with this the bunny or the rabbit always represents fertility with me and also fast paced change so I feel like this might be a, a hint with you or this could still just be like your success was very I don't know I just feel like this moment of like you get into that car after the war show and everything was really fast and then now suddenly you're alone it, it's very jarring but I do feel like you might be yearning for this four of cups, yearning for this partnership, learning for this stable commitment, learning, yearning for this foundation, right? I'm not going to get too much into like advice. I'm just giving you what I'm feeling from your energy. And this is definitely what I'm feeling. I'm paying attention to these, uh, these ribbons right here. And it's like, they're tied, they're tied, they're tying this like reef thing on. Let me know in the comments if I'm like getting the name of this wrong but like they're they're tied down and also like it's two people celebrating not just one person like you really want this partnership and you want it to be stable and i'm looking at these people it look kind of like fussy in the background and both these people have their backs turned to them and i feel like you feel like having that type of partnership having that intimacy having that little that club between you and that other person will really make it easier to drunk drown out other people you know if you've seen uh, what's it called that music video by taylor swift it's called everything has changed the original one with uh ed sharon the music video and it's like these two kids and they're going around town oh yeah <laughs> i'll mean, say it in a little bit and but they're going around town they don't really care about the other kids they're just in their own little world i think they were like drawing markers on each other's faces and with this this queen of wands this is very earth, uh, I always get like earthy fire energy, like something happening in the, in the real world. And I feel like you, this is like defensiveness to it. Like you really want it to happen. That's why it's in reverse. Like this person sitting and waiting. You, I feel like you're really frustrated with this whole situation of like, when's it going to happen for me? When am I going to get my person with all of these sunflowers? Uh, maybe look up the 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 time it takes for sunflowers to grow, and I feel like that might or to become in like full bloom or full maturity. I feel like that might give you some uh, closure as to like the timing of things, or not maybe not closure, but like some insight into the timing of things. But I feel like whatever this is, it'll it'll be worth the wait tenfold. And I don't like when people say that, but it'll definitely be something that blows your mind i feel like because this person is like it has they they have one sunflower and it's like that's all they want it's just somebody to come with one sunflower but behind them they have all these sunflowers so it's like this is your worth and even on the the crown this is your worth all these sunflowers so it's like a, you can't just get one person you can't get a person with one sunflower you got to get a person that come with it like you with all this different stuff and you know sometimes like, imagine, think about how rare you are. Think about how rare it is for somebody to meet you and to be close to you. So that's the same way it is going to be for your person and to get to you. Okay, so I see here, <laughs> you have the song Dorothea, which is why I was like, oh, Dorothea is all about this famous, successful person. <laughs> and it's like, do you still think about me? And for this song, I feel like this is somebody thinking about you. I feel like you're Dorothea, but at the same time, I feel like you might be the person singing to Dorothea. I feel like maybe you do know this person. Or maybe you're like, you're craving this like small town, again, intimacy. Right, so I feel like with the Dorothea song, it's like, hey, Dor Dorothea, do you ever stop and think about me? And I feel like with this, that is this Queen of Pentacles card. Do you ever stop and think about me? Let me fold this real quick. And you're like thinking about, does anybody ever, excuse me, stop and think about you i feel like there's like this real disconnect between success and like 
I'm gonna write it down like financial. I'm a terrible speller, so just bear with me. Financial success and romantic success. Like you have this, or maybe it doesn't have to necessarily be financial, but you have something that you're you a lot of people would be very proud of, and but you don't have this thing. It's like you take home the Olympic medal or you take home the Grammy and then you watch other people who lost get into the cards with their families. And you're like, who really lost here? I'm paying attention to this place is the same as it ever was. I feel like this is like symbolizing for you fruitlessness again with with this uh queen of wands like waiting at this place and everybody says like it's supposed to come at this time or somebody's supposed to be here and it, they're not there like there's nobody comes there's no turnout the stars in your eyes shine brighter in tupelo i feel like I don't, I know, I can't tell. I don't know if you like, you know, this person or not. Maybe it's for different people who clicked on this pile. Like maybe some of you know who this is and who you want and maybe others don't. Like you're, you're waiting for this, this feeling of like somebody to shine. You're waiting for this feeling of somebody to have a spark in your eye. Again, this line, I feel is significant. It's if you're ever tired of being known for who you know, you know, you always know me. And I feel like with you specifically is this line, like you're, you're tired of like people like patting you on the back and congratulating you and making you feel like you have it all. And it's like, cause you do, but they don't see that you're missing so much. It, again, that feeling of like fake happy. Uh, yeah. With this Dorothea, I feel like maybe this is you, like your inner child or inner the inner you singing to yourself. With, especially with this line, it's like, Dorothea, and it's like, oh, you're a queen selling dreams, selling makeup and magazines, ooh, from you I'd buy anything. It's like, you're saying to yourself, like, how cool you are, but, like, nobody's buying what you're really selling. And I feel like sometimes you give yourself, like, pep talks, like, I'm the best, right? Like, you, you encourage yourself and give yourself confidence boosts. But I feel like there's this feeling in you that's, like, afraid that it's not being backed up by reality. With this skipping prom. Yeah. Okay. I'm drawn to this line too late. It's never too late to come back to my side. So for some people, I feel like you want some type of uh, reunion or a fresh start with somebody. And for others who this you don't know the person or you don't know like who makes your heart be or your 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 eyes shine like stars <laughs> you're like saying it's never too late for that spark to reignite stars in your eyes this whole like woo ooh, ooh thing it's very dreamy it's very like it's it's not it's non-constructed like all of these sophisticated words. And I feel like this is you like 24 hours in the day. And this is what you crave. You crave like something to be unconstructed. You crave something to be spontaneous. You crave something to be wild and magical. And nobody can see that this is what you need. Like it's like with the emperor, you know, everybody like gives to the emperor, but they can't, they won't ever be able to like, offer they're not offering what they really need like it's everybody brings you like gold but what you really need is a hug or everybody comes to your party but what you really need is somebody to stay tonight and nobody is fulfilling that order and you you would like them to say that all right so 
let's get your advice from the oracle cards you have hostilities i feel like this is supposed to be in reverse i'm gonna keep it up right now but i know i'm gonna keep heat of it and then indecision in reverse these are two of the i don't know i feel like i associate these two cards as being like the two toughest cards in the deck that's what i heard from this oracle deck and this is what i mean by you like i feel like other people don't see this about you i'm noticing first off these trees in the background with all these branches i feel like this is you you desire connection so bad and not just like connection like you go to work and you talk to your co-workers or you go and you exchange a meal like what's it called like transactional conversations or goal-oriented conversations that's what I mean about this Ooh, you you desire conversation you want somebody to just talk to you just to talk to you right and I feel like with these being the advice cards and these being in reverse I feel like first off with this indecision, I feel like your answer from spirit or your guidance from spirit is like, you can't, excuse me. Use when I break that means like an uh, indication of like a, a lot of energy. You create your reality to a great extent, to a certain extent. And you have to, you can't like, well, it's a lot of memes. It's like, me saying I want more friends, but then me every time I somebody asks me to hang out with them. And I'm not saying that like people, I know sometimes people just literally don't offer, but at the same time, you have to decide I want friends. I want, or I want intimate connections. I want a romantic connection. You have to decide that you can't be wishy-washy saying like, I want this, but at the same time, I feel like I don't deserve it or it's impossible for somebody like me. Like, you have to be decisive about it. That's step one. Be decisive about that. And then step two, it's like, let's say this lane is like leads to intimate connection. Let's say it leads to this four of wands, right? I'll just move all of these on top. Let's say it. this, this is the way to your heart. And this is you like gardening, <laughs> like a warrior. And I think these numbers might have some significance for you. 26 and 8, you might be seeing these numbers. Or 6 plus 2 is 8. <laughs> so you might be seeing 8 a lot. But also, again, 8 is the number for abundance. And I feel like you're very abundant. Uh, and if not, you're about to be. But I feel like you you already are. I feel like you have... You, you have had some type of major success in this world. But uh, yeah, and this is you like guarding it. So these two cards go perfectly together. It's like you say you want something, but then this is how you act when people come come to your door, come knocking at your door. Like, I don't know. I'm just saying like somebody like coming to your apartment door and then they knock and I don't know, I just feel like maybe it's some kids like saying trick or treat or something and then you open the door and you're like, what do you want? <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> and it's like, but you feel so lonely. It's almost like the Grinch. Uh, and I don't mean to offend you in any way. I mean it in a very comedic and humorous way, the Grinch. It's uh, it's it's perfect too, the Grinch. Uh, in the Grinch, he's laying on his bed and I'm talking about the movie. And uh, somebody... He was like listening to like his uh voicemails or voice messages. You know, we don't really get too many of those, especially on a, on a like a physical phone connected to the the building. But whatever. Anyway, he like clicks a little button to like play back his uh missed calls or messages he might have missed, and it's like beep. Hello, this is the Grinch. Don't you ever call my phone? Don't you? If you leave a voicemail, I will hunt you down and gut you like a fish. <laughs> and then it says boop and it's like it's like leave a message at the beep and it's like boop and then no messages and he's like hmm <laughs> i wonder why anybody didn't call me today and it's like i feel like that's that's your energy with this but yeah that's been your advice part now i'm going to get you one last quote that's handwritten from taylor swift herself from her diary i cannot be on the same page this is the same page that uh the first pile got 
But I'm going to go with, I'm going to trust my good. I feel like you're this one. They were this one, but you're this one. It says, criticism of my performances has been the biggest source of pain in my life. I sometimes feel like my college degree is in acting like, is it acting like I'm okay when I'm not? Taylor. It, oh my God. <laughs> this is literally you. This is what I've been like saying to you. I feel like people don't. People are missing like your point or like they don't, they take you for granted or they, they miss something about you. I'm going to read it again and then we can end it. Criticism of my performances has been the biggest source of pain in my life. I sometimes feel like my college degree is in acting like I'm okay when I'm not. And I feel like if you go back and you look at Taylor Swift when she was younger, like really watch her, especially like when, uh, yeah, just go back and like really pay attention to her. And like she seems all smiley and happy, but really she wasn't a lot of the times. Uh, so yeah, pile two, this has been your reading. Please let me know in the comments if this related, if you like this kind of reading where you don't see my face and you see the cards for once. And if you like this reading with the lyrics, because I really liked it. I think it was really fun. Let me know if it related to you. Uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to share this with the people you love and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much. I really appreciate it and I will keep making videos for you because I love to do them. And uh, don't forget to check out my Instagram account because it's lit. <laughs> but yeah, this has been your reading and come back next time. Bye. Hello, pal number three. This is going to be a reading day on what Taylor Swift song are you? Before I get started breaking out the layout of read, I just want to go ahead and say that before I just press record on the camera, I tried to control Z, <laughs> the camera angle. Like I messed it up and I was like, oh, I can press control Z to put it back where it was. And you can't do that in real life. So I feel like <laughs> that might be something that you do. Like, do you ever catch yourself like, oh, I wish I could press like control all delete you know on stuff when you can't you might be a very technological person you might spend a lot of time on your phone or on computers you might have a lot knowledge on software and hardware and excuse me even gaming systems you might have some sort of uh knowledge about that also i wanted to mention for some reason with this reading that like i don't have to have stuff so neat in my area today because it's only on the cards so i feel like you might be one of those people again you might be like somebody who like is on their laptop or something a lot and you like you wear pajamas in the zoom meeting like something like that that's what i'm picking up for you but okay so the layout of your reading today we're going to first get the energy that you're in right now with these tarot cards i do want to mention that you got four tarot cards <clears throat> excuse me unlike the other piles and then my voice is also being weird so you might have some throat chakra blockages and then you also got three uh orca cards even though everybody else got two so your energy with the tarot cards and then when i get your song that i randomly selected i don't know what it is yet but i'm printing out the lyrics and then you got we're gonna go into your oracle cards to give you advice on you know this whole situation whatever messages come up from the Taylor Swift song by the way this is your bottom of the deck energy in case you were wondering what that is and then finally after the tarot cards after I break down the lyrics after the oracle cards when I randomly select you a handwritten diary entry from Taylor Swift herself that is in this book so I'm excited okay I feel like with you you might be like I don't know what hesitant or what's it called uh have some pre pre what's it called like when you, there's some sort of hesitation word about this reading I feel like you might feel like it's not <laughs> gonna be for you but anyways okay the first one you have is nine of emotions which is nine of cups oh that's nice which is that's the yeah, you don't need to know, but yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Uh, then you have six of material, which is six of pentacles in reverse, but I won't, I won't forget that it's in reverse. I'm just going to turn it right side up. Then you have the fool in reverse as well. 
you have 96 and then this is 8 or the infinity symbol and then you have the Empress <clears throat> so with these cards I feel like there's a lot of movement in your life I feel like you might be getting called to be more spiritual but you don't really want to. That's what I was saying. I was literally just saying that. <laughs> That's crazy. I was just saying about like you might have some uh some hesitancy about doing this reading. Like you don't really trust that it's gonna be for you. Like you know how people are like, oh, that's cool, but it's not for me. Like I feel like that's that's how you feel. Like it's not gonna work for me. Like you, I feel like you don't. What the people call it mumbo jumbo when they don't believe in some. That's how I feel about you with this nine of emotions which is nine of cups and it's like this genie lamp this lamp right here it's about this card is about wish fulfillment but i feel like with you you're trying to like hold on to your to the gems that you do have and you're like trying to focus on that and i feel like spirit is asking you to let it go or not not to let go of like your uh Excuse me. This is when I burp a lot. Uh, it has to do with like a lot of energy. But I also just finished eating. <laughs> so that's probably a reason right there. But uh, it, it's, that spirit isn't asking you to like let go of your abundance or your materials, right? But they're asking you to let go of like focusing so much on like maintaining them. I feel like that's what a lot of your attention is on right now, especially with this bottom of the deck being the seven of, of materials, which is the seven of pentacles. <clears throat> I always take this to be like somebody who's like planting in a garden and making sure like going over and over. Is are you okay? Are you okay? Do you need water? Like very much paying attention to it. And I feel like if you look outside of this little bubble that this person is in, it's so much abundance out there. Like it's, you don't have to worry so much about these seven little plants when you got all of these, right? And I feel like that's, this is you in this little bubble. I'm trying to make sure stuff is good. And usually people are like that because they really had to earn the things that they have. Like you, when people work hard for something, they tend to be more, they tend to take care of it more. Like, uh, I said like coming of age thing when like the <clears throat> the parents make the son like work on the old car <clears throat> and they eventually are like hey you can have the car and it's like hopeful that they'll take care of it better because they worked on it and I feel like you really had to earn all these uh pentacles and now you feel like like you have to very much pay attention to it I feel like even like with humbleness, like you, you're making sure uh, that you don't get a big head about stuff and take stuff for granted. And it's a lot of like work to constantly remind yourself, be like this, be like this, be like this. And spirit is actually asking you, encouraging you. And I feel like even sending you signs with these nine and the six, you might be saying nine and six or 69. What's six plus nine? 15, which is just six which is the number of unconditional love. Uh, yeah, I feel like Spirit is asking you to let go and trust and be more, believe more rather than, rather than rely on logic. Okay, so I'm getting like example of the SpongeBob movie. <clears throat> And I might have given this example before in my previous piles for number three. So go back and check that out <laughs> my other videos. But it's like Spongebob has to go to Pearl City in the Spongebob movie, the first one, to get the, the crab, the, king, the king's crown, right? And the one who sends them there is the princess. She's the king's daughter. And it's like she could like micromanage them the whole way. And like make sure everything's going right like when they run into the monsters and she is there for a little bit I feel like that's you she gives them the little mustaches to give them encouragement but at the end of the day she decides you know or she just knows intuitively just to trust that they'll fix it I think even like plankton plankton doubts or like somebody was like 
you really think those idiots are going to come back with the crown? And she's like, yeah, I believe it. It's like believing rather than standing on top of it and like making sure it works. That's what spirit is trying to get you to do. Like be more, be more of this full energy, be more free flowing and spontaneous. And that's why both of these were in reverse. <laughs> and then with this high priestess, or it just says the priestess, the priestess, the high priestess is a very spiritual person. She's very connected with her third eye in the spiritual realm. And I feel like this is what spirit is trying to like get you to go towards, like being more connected with your intuition, that gut feeling in you versus doing the numbers on something. Like, let's say you want to make an investment in something. And instead of like just trusting like, oh, I'm going to pick this one. I feel like there's something about number seven on this list of investments or number something about number six or 14. I'm going to invest in those. Rather than trusting that, you would go and like look at the logistics of it. Look at the numbers and <clears throat> which which company is more likely to make the most profit in this margin of time. Like Spirit really wants you to trust yourself. With the, these curtains, I don't know, I keep paying attention to these curtains and I usually don't pay attention to these curtains. I feel like I'm getting like a theater type feeling with with this maybe you have these spiritual insights and you keep them like under wraps I don't know if it's necessarily from people it could be from people like you don't share that you're a very spiritual person with the people in your life but I feel like you might your intuition might tell you stuff all the time or you'll like you might have a clear audience is, is when you hear, you have a spiritual he hearing and you'll hear, some, you'll hear something. Why am I having trouble speaking? And you'll like put it off. Like you just, you brush it off. That's what I'm feeling like. Uh, or like tell yourself you're crazy or you're imagining things and it's like you're not. And I feel like spirit doesn't want you to do that but obviously I want they want you to know something that's why you're uh hearing things I feel like there's like a lot of misconceptions about Claire audience it's not like voices in your mind literally but it's like it's almost like Claire uh cognizance which is psychic knowing but it comes in the form of words Right, whereas Claire Cognizance would just be like, Oh, I know the answer is B. You would hear, you would hear <laughs> in your mind the answer is B, right? So I feel like you should do some research on that, and I feel like even more you should listen to people who have Claire audience so you can see that it's, it's not like voices in your mind, right? But obviously, if you feel inclined and in, what's it called? If you feel, yeah, if you feel inclined to go visit a, a doctor about it, then you should. But yeah, I feel like you should definitely do some research and more on self-acceptance. Okay, <laughs> so now let's get into your your letter. Ooh, this one is a bit tough to open. I feel like that's... <clears throat> A metaphor for you like you might be a tough shell right people might find you uh hard to know hard to get close to let me move some stuff around do 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 Oh, you got the other side of the door. So this song, ironically, <laughs> is the one that I don't know that well. It's from the uh, Fearless Taylor Versions Taylor Version album, and it's one of the bonus tracks that was originally supposed to be on the the album but didn't make it. With this song, when I listened to it today, when I randomly selected this song, I felt. 
it's like a very country song. Like, you know how some Taylor Swift songs, like, it's like, it's country-esque. This is, this is a, <laughs> this is a country song. And it was about, from what I could feel, it's like this person who had a lot of pride and they wanted somebody to come back and they wanted to be with somebody, but they weren't willing to say that. And I feel like with you, you maybe don't want what you're asking for. Okay? So I feel like with you, this song is like, the reason that you won't give up your pride is because that pride is actually your instinct and your instinct is telling you no, but you like assume it's your pride and you kind of feel bad for not doing it. Like I, I had, I've had this a lot in my life where like I've been upset with myself because I couldn't do something that other people did like that was normal, right? Let's say, um, Everybody else goes to like pick apples at this haunted orchard. I don't know why this is a random example. And it's like something in you is telling you don't go. But you're like, oh, I'm just being like pretentious. I, the only reason I don't want to go is because everybody else is going. I want to be hard. I want to be a stick in the mud. And I just want to be different for the sake of being different, right? And But in reality, your instinct is telling you don't go to that orchard because it's haunted let's get into the the lyrics i'm gonna read a little bit of yours since i don't know this song too well <laughs> all too well <laughs> in the heat of the fight i walked away ignoring words that you were saying trying to make me stay i said this time i've had enough and you've called a hundred times but i'm not picking up because i'm so mad i might tell you that it's over but if you look a little closer i said leave but all i really want is you Let's circle this one. I stand outside my window throwing pebbles, screaming, I'm in love with you. Wait there in the pouring rain. If I want is you to stand outside my window throwing pebbles, screaming, I'm in love with you. Wait there in the pouring rain, coming back for, for more. And don't you leave because I know all I need is on the other side of the door. Me and my stupid pride are sitting here alone, going through photographs, staring at the phone. I keep going back over the things we both said, and I remember the slamming door and all the things that I misread. Okay. This is what I'm talking about, like some sort of misunderstanding. And I feel like it's associated with your intuition and spirit wanting you to be more, more spiritual and, and less logical and less like in your, your head space. I feel like you think something is harmful and in actuality it's not. Like you think something is gonna hurt you or was meant to hurt you and in actuality in reality it's trying to love you like you misread a love letter and thought it was like hate speech or something maybe not hate speech but <laughs> you thought it was like a i don't know it's a a critic a critical a critical letter but it was a love letter It says, oh, babe, if you know everything, tell me why you couldn't see. And with this, I feel like tell me why you couldn't see is important. When you left, I wanted you to chase after me. I feel like with you, there's some type of like dual energy is what I was saying between this very, very practical person and then this very spiritual person i'm getting this movie in my mind what's it called uh noah's ark it's the it's the one that's a comedy and i think what's his name uh steve carell yeah and it's like the noah ark movie i'll put it in the i'll put it in the description Right? 
And in that movie, he starts off as this very business-like person. I think he works for like a law firm or insurance company or advertisement company, something like that, where he has to be really controlled and not really pay attention too much to his emotions. And then everybody thinks he's crazy because he starts getting these like, like animals keep coming to him. He keeps seeing God. And I feel like that's what's happening to you especially when I was saying about these curtains. And at first he tries to like hide it from people and pretend it's not happening. And then you might be undergoing a spiritual awakening. And eventually he gives into it completely and everybody thinks he's crazy. And then a flood does actually come and he's the one that's prepared. And I feel like spirit is trying to use you to help people. But in order to help people, sometimes you have to disappoint them. And I feel like this is what this song is about. The other side of the door. I keep paying attention also to this line, I'm in love with you. Here it is again. Let me know in the comments if this line has any significance to you. But I feel like mostly you're craving something wild. You're craving something crazy like this because it's authentic and you know it's the truth. I feel like you're one of those people who like can easily tell when somebody's lying too. All right. Let's read the, I think it's the bridge. Okay, yeah. And I'll scream out the window, I can't even look at you, but I don't need you, but I do, I do, I do. I say there's nothing you can say to make this right again. I mean it, I mean it. But what I mean is I said leave, but baby, all I want is you. To stand outside my window throwing pebbles, screaming I'm in love with you. It's like, you. I feel like you almost want somebody else to like do it first. <laughs> So you can like say like it's okay, but I feel like even if somebody did do it first, you you still would be waiting for another person to do it first. And then if two people were doing it, you'd be like, I'm gonna wait on the third just to be in the clear. Like I feel like you want somebody else to be Noah first so you can feel okay with trusting your intuition and trusting your uh clear audience. I feel like for somebody watching this video, this is your first time like watching a tarot reading. You were like led to this video and you don't really do this. But others of you, you might just be, You this might not be your first video, but you're like getting into tarot and stuff. I'm paying attention with beautiful face and your beautiful eyes. And then I'm looking at this high priestess with the beautiful face and the beautiful eyes. I feel like you might have really pretty eyes and a pretty face if, if I'm being uh, direct about this, this line. I feel like when people see you, they already can sense that there is something magical about you. What's it? It's Twilight, but it's in a lot of different movies and books as well, especially books where like creatures like vampires they have this alluring quality to them, this je ne sais quoi. And it's a part of their, like Edward says in Twilight, like, like it's a part of his uh, predatory, uh, what's it called? Arsenal. Like it's it's a part of his arsenal to, to lure people in. I'm not saying that you're a vampire, that you harm people in any way. But I'm saying like people might feel like People feel very allured, lured towards you. You're very alluring. People find you very alluring. I'm paying attention to this bun too. You might wear buns or you might just have this like thing about you where you can wear like a messy bun like this and like people see you as somebody who's dressed for the red carpet. It is very, very beautiful, but okay. Let's get into your advice. All tied up. Yeah. <laughs> Blossoming abundance. I believe this was in reverse. 
but it's okay. It don't matter. And walking away. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I feel like this is you right now. I feel like I should get this, this card out. Look at this. Oh, it is kind of like a person casting a spell is always what I take from this. But it, it's also these same flowers. I feel like once you let go and get outside of this little bubble, abundance will start. Like things will be much easier and a lot easier, I'm hearing, than you thought. It's not, I feel like you think it's such a dramatic change like it is, but I was just talking about that movie with the Noah and the Ark. But like once... I, I feel like it's not as difficult as you think, even though there will be difficulties. Because this is in reverse. I feel like you you think it's going to be, with it's this way, it's flowing downward. But in uh, the upright, it's flowing. And that's why the blossoming abundance is basically clarifying this. And this was in reverse as well. But when I flipped it over just now, I automatically put it in the upright. I feel like you think... You're in this spot where, like, you can't stay in the old way that you do things, but you don't want to go to the new way that you're being encouraged to go. I feel like you might be getting a lot of signs. Again, I said, uh, and then you have 23 and another three here. Two plus three is five. It's a lot of changes. And then you have, like, this flower here, which is what you want, what you've been trying to manifest, and you can't reach it. And I feel like Spirit is telling you, once you let go of this old and like let go of these vines, I feel like you're like keeping yourself trapped by trying to like stay between. It'll be much easier. Stuff will flow in from all directions. And this is the first time I'm noticing these little gold nuggets. These gold nuggets. I feel like those are like hidden Easter eggs. Look here. You just have to pay attention and find them. And I feel like you're going to keep finding little Easter eggs on your journey. I don't think it's going to be as brutal as you think. Usually with spiritual awakenings, they're very abrupt and they can be kind of rough. But I don't feel like that's the case for you. Uh, like I'm saying, like either you're just now getting into tarot readings or you've been into them for a while, but you haven't really... It's one thing to watch stuff, but it's another thing to actually partic participate in it. And I feel like you're being called to dive deeper into it. And I feel like with this walk away car, it's, it's not a goodbye. It's a hello. It's like this person is about to go on the adventure of their lives, like outside of this gate. And you can't even see it because I feel like it doesn't even exist in the way that's like... I don't want to say like possible, but it's like, it looks like a whole bunch of clouds. It looks like heaven. And I feel like the reason, I feel like heaven. <laughs> okay, let me let, just put in a metaphor because I am having trouble saying it literally. Uh, I was watching this movie called A Boy Called Christmas on Netflix. And he came upon like the, the elf village and he found two elves and he was like, hey, can you point me where the elf helm is, the elf village? He was like, can you show me where it's at? And he was like, the elf was like, can't you see it? Like, it's it's right here. And I feel like that's why it's not in this, this card, what's on the other side. Because you can't see it until you turn around and you look and you believe. And that's what the elf told me. He was like, in order to see it, you have to believe it's there. And once he believes it, then he can see that the, the beauty and the wonder of Elville. And I feel like that's how it is for you. If you've been trying to like peek over and like see and see if it's safe and you don't see anything, well, that's why. Because it won't exist until you believe. I'm also being paid, called to notice these uh, little pillars. I've never paid attention to these before. And I, they look like glass balls or crystal balls. So you might be getting to something with crystal balls. I don't know. Or maybe just call to reflect. Or you might just be a psychic, period. <laughs> and which will be, uh, I think it's clairvoyant when you can see things. So yeah, you're a pretty cool, powerful person. It's nice to meet you. All right, finally, let's get your Taylor Swift diary message. Okay. Oh, that's me. 
She has a little journal part in the back. Maybe you need to write your own story. This is the one that I saw first. Okay. This is perfect. So you don't get at any actual written words. <laughs> you get pictures of Taylor Swift. And I feel like this is a, a metaphor or indication that you're going on this spiritual journey and that it'll have many different aspects to it. And look again, here are these flowers. So maybe look up the meaning of pink flowers. Or if you know what type of flower this is, because <laughs> I don't look up the meaning of that flower. But look, in this one, she's like in a car. In this one, she's like on the side of the road. In this one, she's in a ball gown. In this one, she's barefoot in the woods. In this one, she's in this nice flowery dress sniffing flowers or roses. In this one, she's like at a beach. And this one, she's about to work out. And this one, she's with her cat. And it's like, this journey will have many different f f phases. Jeez. This journey will have many different phases. And I feel like spirit's advice is just don't clean so tight to like one idea of what success or what happiness looks like. And just be open to experiencing life. So pile number three, this has been your reading. <laughs> And I hope you loved it. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much. Give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to leave a comment because I want to know what you think of this new, uh, I guess, visual style reading. <laughs> and don't forget to check out my Instagram because it's cool and it's awesome and I like it. And I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, pile number four. This is going to be your reading today on what Taylor Swift song are you? And before I get started organizing like how the reading's gonna go down, I wanna talk about your energy. I immediately saw like imagery of Harry Potter flying through uh, the air on his broom. And he's like flying through the, the, the towers of Hogwarts. And I believe it's towards the end. It's the one with the, uh, the games. The one with Edward from Twilight, what's his name? Robert Patterson. What's the name of that, that movie? Uh, it's not it's not the last, the end end of the the books. It's like towards the middle. What's it called? Anyways, <laughs> I'll put it below. The one with the games. And basically what I'm feeling from that is how hairy because i feel like this uh this pain in my the center of my back is it's not a, a strong pain but it's like something that's persistent like i think he's running from a dragon in this instinct and it's like he has this responsibility or feels like he has this responsibility all the time to like he can never get a break right and i think earlier in that movie he like was caught on camera or whatever uh hugging Hermione or however you pronounce her name and it's like the papers misshrewed that is like they're dating it's like he can't even get a hug of support from his friend without people coming in and ruining it like it, this little simple moment of a hug with his friend gets blown out of proportion and becomes this this whole thing right and yeah that's what I'm feeling but <laughs> basically, first I want to get the, your energy from these tarot cards here. And I gave you four. I was going to give you three like the rest except for pile number three. But I was like, I feel like you, yeah, that's got another sign that you need this last one. These are your bottom of the deck energies. This is the first bottom of the deck, the death. And then the high priestess was the next one. Mm -hmm. So a bit of spoilers there. Excuse me. But after I finish reading your energy from the tarot cards, when I get into your song your randomly selected song that's by taylor swift and then after that i want to get into advice from these oracle cards about whatever messages come up and then finally we're going to get a handwritten diary entry that i'm going to randomly pick that was written by taylor swift herself <laughs> okay all right here we go i should have known i should have known so knight of pentacles knight of wands the moon and six of cups so <laughs> hello again <laughs> i have definitely had these people this energy before if you're new here 
welcome and I strongly suggest that you go back and watch my other readings because this is this is, this is a theme that I've been getting for a while. I think this same card came out in my urgent messages from the universe uh, reading. And this one as well has come up in a pile four reading before. Or either when I was doing only three piles, the, the third pile, this one came out. Okay. <laughs> what I'm feeling from this one is this Knight of Pentacles. I recently learned that Knight of Pentacles is the slowest knight in the deck. And I'm paying attention to this like current thing, whatever this is. It's like the, it's like a a lava a river what's it called a river of lava or lava river like imagine how slowly that would flow and i feel like this has been what's happening like if we're going back to that harry potter metaphor like it's it's been slow to hunt down like this whole thing with Voldemort. like this the whole thing all these years at hogwarts <laughs> It's it's been very slow, like getting to the bottom of it. Every time Harry thinks that, like, oh, this is it, Voldemort keeps coming up with a new different way. <laughs> Look, this person is tired. <laughs> this person is tired. Like, like they put up all these wands, and now they have to sit and guard them. It's like the work is never done. I almost wanna, I almost wanna clarify this, but I'm gonna just refrain and stick to the ones that I have here. But I feel like with this energy, I feel almost like I'm like held back. With this, it's like the my the blind lights or the light from my blinds. My window is like over this and it's like bars. So you might feel very stuck or like you've been in the the same position for a while. It's barking at the moon. It's that's a Bruno Mars song. It's like talking to the moon. And it's like the same meaning as that phrase, you're preaching to the choir. It's like, I feel like you've been yelling out your wants and your dreams and desires towards, you know, the universe over and over and over. Like, that's what you've been doing. Like, ruff, 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 ruff. And then they won't hear you. I feel like, what's it? I feel like, of course, it, it would be in a Harry Potter movie where, like, somebody tries to like then you just have to keep doing it over and over and you can't stop okay let's forget harry potter let's go to nanny mcphee if you see nanny mcphee the first movie and these bad kids are <laughs> misbehaving kids they decide to make potions and stuff and uh explode things instead of going to bed and uh, eating dinner and going to bed and so Nana McPhee comes, she's like, okay, you don't want to go to bed. You want to keep doing this? Okay, well, keep doing this forever. And she t does her little staff, and they have to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And they, they can't stop doing it because they're about to, like, uh, explode their baby sister or something. They can't stop the movement until they say please, until all of them say please. And at the very last moment, the little boy is like, please, Nanny McPhee. And <laughs> she does her little staff again and stops it. So definitely two references here of wands and like magic and power, which I feel you do live in like that kind of road. But also look how long this road is, like a long, <laughs> a long journey towards this mountaintop right and it's like since the beginning you've been like saying the same thing it also i'm getting that movie are we there yet it's like at the beginning they're like are we there yet and then are we there yet when they're here and then are we there yet and then finally he says yes and finally nana mcphee does her thing and i feel like you know the outcome of this is sweetness but i feel like this is this is the gist of your energy with the death card, I feel like you had to leave a lot of things behind. A lot of people behind I'm seeing specifically. But I also I'm feeling like a lot of habits. I'm hearing <laughs> I'm hearing the King's Dead, which is a it's a Kendrick Lamar song from the Black Panther soundtrack with this crown and this person looking like they they lifeless. <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking at this like the same, it's the same thing as this these little stones and it's like 
I was gonna say it's like this person arrived to it, but I feel like this was like on the way there or something. Or like you got past this and it, this was on the other side and which was death, which like it, it required more of you is what I'm getting. But with the high priestess and then the three of cups after that, you're definitely a very spiritual person. And you've been on it. This is a spiritual journey. And you might have these initials, this B and this J. You might be a religious person with this cross. This is a number two, I believe. So two might be a significant number for you as well. Okay. Now let's get into your Taylor Swift song. Ooh, <laughs> okay. You got a Christmas tree farm by Taylor Swift. This one isn't on an album, it's just a single. And she recently redid this single to, uh, it's like a sad girls version or like autumn version, one of them. Let me know if you've listened to it. But A Christmas Tree Farm is like about a person who's like caught up in everyday life and going through the motions and it's like holiday shopping traffic with this line. Stress and holiday shopping traffic. Let me move these up. One second. One second while I move these cards. Okay. Right? And it's like in order to like get a moment of peace, they, she closes her eyes and pictures that she's on this Christmas tree farm. And I feel like this is you kind of, like I feel like you've been on this journey for so long and you've been wanting progress and upward mobility for so long. And what you do to survive this, or I guess some advice is to Pretend like you already have what you've been asking for. Like, pretend like it's happening. For some reason with you, I feel like I don't feel sad. I don't feel like, I feel like this is more in the past. Like, this rise on the left. And this is more in the present. I feel like you feel like you've finally been given a gift. Like, you finally had some progress after all of this. But it's really new because this is the only like card where I feel like, yay. <laughs> and it, this is like slow. And this is like, oh, and this is like, P -da 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 -da. please help, 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 help. And it's like, this is the only one that's like finally some reprieve, right? This is the only one where they're not holding a pinnacle and they're not on a horse and they're not holding this and they're not barking. They're just standing there receiving or giving, right? And I feel like that's what this song is doing, like bringing in this like new, refreshing type of energy. Like in your heart, there's a Christmas tree farm, like something finally uh, happened. I'm being caught to this, telling me I love you. I feel like you feel a bit more appreci appreciated. Uh, yeah, and also the meaning of like Christmas trees, maybe look up like, the actual name of these trees and like the spiritual meaning of them, of Christmas trees. I don't know. Because I feel like that would have some sort of significance to you. But I also feel like Christmas trees themselves, they stay alive in winter. And it's like, these are some pretty tough trees when you think about it. Like they hard to the core. That like hard to record, but they're pretty strong. Like to these trees live in winter and that's why they're so celebrated and that's why they're so special. And I feel like that's the perfect metaphor for you. And then they have these branches that are that are strong enough to hold all the ornaments and stuff and the lights, right? And it's like, that's why Harry Potter was chosen because he was the one that was strong enough to be able to withstand a... Uh, Voldemort's spell and that's that's you and if sometimes if you ever wonder why 
and why is it so hard for me? It's because you're the only one that can do that, right? That can survive a dragon, <laughs> survive people cursing you, survive people hunting you down, survive like a whole team of like, what's it called? Death eaters, like after you, right? You, you're the only one. And I feel like you're just very special. And I, that's why you got this Christmas tree farm, that song from Taylor Swift. I'm drawn to this line. There's a light in the barn. I feel like with you, this means there's a there's a light in the dark. Or there, like I just see this person who's like outside in the dark or going home after a long day of work. And they turn to their left and in their barn, there's like a light glowing behind a window. And I feel like when you go into that barn, there's a special, like somebody stayed up all night, like decorating that barn to give you like a romantic dinner or a candlelit dinner. It doesn't have to be romantic. Like somebody really loves you and you are getting some type of gift or surprise. Like somebody is like going out of their way to make you feel special, even if it is spirit, you know, even if it is just like a, a beautiful cloud imagery in the sky or butterflies when you're crossing the street like you're getting some type of light in the barn moment draw to this one in the town kids are dreaming of, of sleighs and they're warm and they're safe they wait to see a blanket of snow sweet dreams of holly and ribbon make mistakes are forgiven yes yeah, some type of renewal is this what the death card is about it's about rebirth right and you could see it as like this person became lifeless, this person rose up, right? But there's definitely some type of rebirth going on with, with you in your life. Drawn to baby, baby, Merry Christmas. Somebody wants to be your baby. <laughs> or somebody just feels very sweet about you. You're very precious to somebody. Because this is said over and over and over again. Watching the fire glow. I feel like that to you. They feel like you're a warm fire to watch. Yeah. Even if this is just like your spirit guides, you're very loved and you're very cherished. Yeah. This song is just really fun and it's uplifting. And it came at a time, I think when things were like slowing down I think when she dropped it but overall that's what I'm getting from this song is that you're going undergoing some type of revival I'm hearing some type of refreshing energy and you might feel you might feel very uh like waiting for the other shoe to drop but one of the shoe drops is going to be a Christmas tree farm <laughs> all right pile four I also wanted to mention that the bars that was on the table it's not just prison bars. If you look at them horizontally rather than vertically, they look like level up bars. I feel like you've been leveling up. And also I'm here like biding your time or like charging up, like building up your energy and building up your, your skill set or, or something like that in order to like hit the power level is what I'm feeling like. Excuse me. But let's get your oracle cards for advice. Advice for power number four. The excuse me. Indecision and action. That's crazy. That is crazy. Excuse me. So pile number three, I believe, actually had indecision as well, but it was in reverse. And then I saw this card while I was while I was shuffling the deck, and I was like, oh, it's not gonna come out, and it came out. And it was just in reverse. Let me see if this one goes in reverse. No. So I feel like if you have, if you don't know something or like if you don't have hmm, an answer about something, you're not supposed to. Like, I feel like this person came down this long path journey and they hit like this dead end. And both ways are unknown to them. I feel like they literally can't see these ways. Like if you've, if you've hit this dead end, you're supposed to be there. And I just heard it's because 
you're not supposed to go either of these ways. I feel like you know that none of these are the answers and also I feel like you can't see. I feel like you're supposed to go literally up, up into the sky, like off the planet. <laughs> That's what I'm feeling like. You, it's that's why you that's why you can't know these two. Like if you're in a place where you don't know something or you feel like your information is being withheld from you, it is, and and you couldn't possibly figure out the answer because you're supposed to go up. And I talked about something similar to this on today on my Instagram. So go check out my Instagram reels. Okay. And I also feel like with this, I'm here in action card. If you keep hitting roadblocks if stuff keeps going wrong like in the middle of this reading my dog is barking and whining it's on purpose like if if you keep having uh roadblocks let's say you uh try to go somewhere right like you go to a restaurant or you go to get coffee and you get there and you realize you left your wallet at the house and now you have to go back and get it. Like these are all signs that something else. I'm getting like this is I don't know. I'm getting like weird stuff. Like if you've seen the magicians or if you've seen like uh Stranger Things, where it's like the what's it called? The upside down. Here it it looks like this, but over there on like the the spiritual world and things that are coming for you, it's this. But you you can't do this. Okay, so if you've seen The Magician, that I mean the show, or if you've read the books, there's this episode where there's this this uh, this luck charm or this luck spell, and they, they need it because they need to have really good luck at the bank or something, and it's like, mm -hmm. excuse me, because there's this spell that brings people a whole bunch of good luck, all the bad luck has to go somewhere. And they the guy channels the bad luck into this teddy bear. And it's like, the bad luck, I don't think it's like anything fatal. It's just a whole bunch of like coincidences that stuff just keeps going wrong. They, they spill their food on the way to the couch or the, water, the boiling water burns their hand or something like that. And I feel like this is kind of relevant for your situation, not in such an extreme way, but if you find that little bitty things keep interrupting you or where you're trying to go or like just the, the smallest things, like you turn on the TV and then the power blanks off and on and off. Those are little bitty things that are indicators that something massive is coming. And I'll leave it at that. Because <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. Okay, what is the message for pile number four from Taylor Swift? I feel like it's this one. Okay, it's August 20, 25th, 2003, Wyoming, Pennsylvania. And this is when she was 13, which is her favorite number. So lucky you. And then 2003. <laughs> so two threes. Did I mention any numbers? Yeah, you got 17, you got eight. Okay. Anyways, today was my first, hey, hey, today was my first day of school and you won't believe how much better eighth grade is than seventh. The real problem last year was the grade above us and now they're ninth graders, so we never see them. I love being older than the seventh graders. I never knew how stupid I must have looked carrying around that huge book bag in the South. <laughs> Running and bumping into everybody, trying to get to class on time. Okay, here's my schedule. And the first one is accelerated, which I mean is, I think I, it means advanced classes. Uh, integrated studies, but maybe not. Two is science, three is American studies, and four is Latin one, and then it's lunch. So I feel like, Again, there's this rebirth energy. And then also the Christmas tree farm. She, she talks about being young and being on a Christmas tree farm. So I feel like with you, there's a whole bunch of energy about rebirth <laughs> and re refreshing new energies. Like imagine how it must have felt to look back at this when life was so simple, like simplifying life. And I feel like that's what you are doing or that's what you should be doing. And that's what this song is saying about you and what, what energy you're in. 
this is the Taylor Swift song that you are. <laughs> and I guess the journal entry that you are, you know, you're very, you're in this energy of like anything is possible. And I'm, you know, eighth grade is so much better than seventh grade. And I, any, I can conquer the world now because I'm an eighth grader, you know? And yeah, so <laughs> this has been your reading pile before. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have, thank you so much. Let me know again in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of reading, if you prefer it, or, you know, you don't have to prefer it over the other, but let me know what you think. And don't forget to check out my Instagram account. So I'll see you next time. Bye.